What's up, everybody? It is Matt Modi with Dodge Jam, and for this video, talking Clippers versus 76ers. So uh, the Sixers continue their West Coast trip. Uh, they just played the Lakers two nights ago. Now they play the Clippers tonight, continuing their LA trip. Um, looking at the game, you know, it's kind of funny. I'm sure the NBA thought they were going to get an awesome game between, you know, mega superstars. Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris versus Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. But a lot has changed since the NBA schedule came out. Um, obviously, Kawhi Leonard has been hurt all year. He hasn't played at all. Uh, Paul George has pretty much been hurt all year. So they're both out for this game. Whereas the Sixers, at least they're still as exciting as ever, both just with the weirdness surrounding their team and then also the style in which they play basketball games. So looking at the odds in this one, um, the Sixers are pretty heavy favorites, minus 223 money line. Uh, the Odds Jam Perfect line has that at plus 97 towards the Clippers. Uh, the only really money line play here, if you were so inclined, would be to bet the Clippers money line at plus 205. Uh, sneak preview, I don't think that's a terrible play. Um, we'll, we'll get to this specific matchup in a couple, in a couple seconds here, but um, I would not be surprised if the Clippers won this game. So looking at these two teams, the Sixers, you know, they have... The, I mean, they have the talent to, to, to be one of the best teams in the NBA. And in terms of record, I mean, they are, right? They're, they're the second seed in the East. I believe they're only a game and a half or two back from the Heat. Uh, so they have the fourth best record in the NBA. But the advanced analytics are not fond of the Sixers. And, you know, you understand why when, when you dig a little bit more into their games. So I believe they're 10th or 11th in net rating in the NBA. They're, I know for a fact they're not even top 10. Um, and... You know, since they got Harden, they have been winning, so I'll give them credit there. They're 11 and 4 in their last 15, but they seemingly are incapable of playing a complete game start to finish. Um, you know, they did when they first got Harden. Their first game against the Timberwolves was was amazing with James Harden. They started 4 and 0 with Harden, but pretty much after that first game, they're either plagued by slow starts in which, you know, they're down by double digits before halftime or um, they blow a double-digit lead in the third quarter. Uh, that's what happened against the Lakers. They were up by, I mean, they, they had, a, I forget the exact number, but they had a double-digit lead. They were up by a decent amount, and they blew it, and they almost they almost lost the game outright. The game got as close as four in the final minute against the Lakers. Um, in other previous games against, um, earlier this week on Sunday, they played the Raptors without OG Inanobi and without Fred Van Vliet, and they blew a lead and lost that game. Um, and it's it's either like like I said they're either going up big to start and then blowing it or they're going down big to start and then coming back. But either way, uh, this team just takes naps through through games. And to me, that a lot of that is on coaching. So uh, I think that the biggest advantage the Clippers have in this game is is honestly just coaching. Um, I have a ton of respect for Ty Lue and what he's been able to do with the team missing Kawhi and Paul George. Um, and I also just love the fact that. You know, Ty Lue experiments in the regular season. He'll try a bunch of different weird lineups. He'll try anything to see what works, where Doc Rivers plays one way, and he plays one way only. Whether it's working or not, he doesn't care. Uh, he, he doesn't, he's not interesting with his rotations. He plays pretty much the same. It's, it's rare that he'll switch off his rotations, and he doesn't try anything different. So he has Joel Embiid. Obviously, he's amazing. I will not say a single thing bad about Joel Embiid as long as I live, but their backup center Rotation is a legit sore spot, and they have five centers on the roster, but they're only playing washed up DeAndre Jordan and washed up Paul Millsap. They have two young guys who have legitimate potential that Doc just refuses to play. So it might not bite the Sixers in this specific matchup because they're just so much more talented than the Clippers, but I really would not be surprised if the Clippers win this game outright. Uh, these two teams played earlier this year, and... Um, the Clippers uh, came back from down 24 and won. The score was 102 to 101. Again, Clippers down by 24. This was in Philly, came back and won. So um, looking at this matchup, like I said, I would not be surprised if the Clippers won. Um, I mean, I, like, I love Ty Lue. They have enough scrappy players on their team. They just need one of them to get hot, like Terrence Mann or Reggie Jackson. Uh, Tough-minded, the more one of the Morris twins. Um, you know, uh, Zubach isn't terrible. So um, they have a, they have good role players. The problem is they just need the stars that are currently hurt. But um, so money line, I'm sitting out the Sixers money line. I If you want to sprinkle some on the Clippers, I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't blame you. Um, looking at the spread is where I do see I do have a play. 
Um, so uh, the odds jam perfect line, you know, it, it favors the Sixers a little bit, but nothing that's plus EV. Um, but I actually love getting the Clippers at plus six. You can get this on Bet Rivers. You can get this on DraftKings. You can get this on Unibet and WinBet. Uh, I, I love this bet. I, I ended up locking it in on WinBet when it um, when the odds were a little bit different. But either way, I think it's a really good bet. Um, my official play for this game, I'm taking the Clippers plus six. I, I love the Clippers covering in this game. Um, I would not be surprised, like I said, if they won outright. And I just think that there's such a wild coaching advantage between these two teams. And also, we haven't even mentioned Doc Rivers coming back to L.A. where he coached for years. Uh, I think that the Clippers want to beat Doc. I think Ty Lue wants to beat Doc. Um, so I'm taking the Clippers plus six in this game. So that's my official spread play, uh, Clippers plus six. I also have a play on the total. Um, again, probably not surprising if you heard my analysis, but I love, love, love the under in this game. So you can get it at 221 and a half on BetMGM and WinBet. Um, the odds jam perfect line prices that at minus 120, prices the other side at plus 108. So that is a positive EV play, only 12 cents in market width, which is very good. And you can get that at on WinBet and BetMGM, again, minus 110. So I lock this in. Uh, I, I love this bet. I put uh, I actually put more than a mixed slam on it. I put 150 on this one. I think it's an incredible bet um, getting this game to go under the total. Um, like I said, the first time these two teams played, it was 102 to 103. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, again, we find a game in the uh, single digits, or, oh, sorry, uh, single, 100 single digits in terms of scoring. So low 100s, um, again, I wouldn't be surprised. And we get the total all the way at 221 and a half. Um, you know, the Sixers, like I said, they <clears throat> they sleepwalk through games at times. They look listless. Um uh, you know, that can hurt them both on offense and defense. The reason why I love the the under specifically in this game is because of how hard the Clippers play defense. So I don't quite think this, the Clippers have what it takes on offense to really put up a ton of points, but I do think that they have what it takes on defense to uh, stop the Sixers from scoring a ton of points. And that, coupled with the Sixers sleepwalking through games, please give me the under in this game. I absolutely love it. So that's actually my favorite play in this game is the under 221 and a half. Again, locked in on that MGM. Um, and that's all I got for you. Unfortunately, uh, there are no uh, player props um, listed on the IHDM Perfect line yet. Just waiting to get those. So I don't have any plays on the player props for this video. But just follow me on Twitter at my handle below. Check the IHDM website um, for, you know, uh, the article for this game is coming out. I'll update the article for player props. Um, so unfortunately for this video, that is all I got for you. Um, would appreciate your thoughts. Like I said, you can hit me up on Twitter at my handle below. You can also comment on the video, provide your feedback that way. I uh, would also appreciate a like on the video and subscribe to the IJM YouTube channel. Uh, but that's all I got for you. So thanks for watching and have a good one.